In this lesson, we're going to be graphing proportional relationships. The success criteria is I can graph an equation that represents a proportional relationship. I can write an equation that represents a proportional relationship. I can use graphs to compare proportional relationships. So I'm going to scroll down here. When two quantities, x and y, are proportional, the relation can be represented by the equation y equals mx, where m is the constant of proportionality. The graph of y equals mx is a line with a slope of m that passes through the origin. So if you take a look at this graph here, we know this is a proportional relationship because it goes through the origin. All proportional relationships graphs will go through the origin. Okay, So anytime you see the word proportional, you know that uh, the origin is included in your set of points on that line. Okay, And then the constant of proportionality is just the slope of this line, Okay, and we call that m. So any proportional relationship can be written in the form y equals mx. The cost y in dollars for x ounces of frozen yogurt is represented by y equals 0.5x. Graph the equation and interpret the slope. So first we're going to graph the equation. Okay, And whenever we're graphing, I like to say, if we're graphing and feeling unable, we can make a table. So I'm going to make a table of values. All right, so there's my table. And just as a review, whenever we're graphing a line, I always recommend the easiest value to plug in for x is going to be 0. Okay, So if I plug in 0, I'm going to get y equals 0 0.5 times 0. So I'll just write that down here. But that's going to be 0. And that makes sense because this point, 0, 0, this is the origin. And we know the origin is in all of our proportional relationships. Okay, So we know this is going to be a proportional relationship. Now I just need to figure out the next um, point on this line. So I am going to pick the point 2 because I have a decimal and I know if I multiply 0 0.5 times 2 it will cancel that decimal. But you could have done 1. You could have done any number that uh, is on our graph right here. So if I do y equals 0 0.5 times 2, well, 0 0.5 is the same as 1 half. Half of 2 is 1. So that's 1. Okay, so now I have my two points. I'm going to plot them on my graph right here. So 0, 0 is the origin. That is this point right here. And then my next point is 2, 1. So I'm going to go right 2 and up 1. That's right here. Okay, And now I'm going to draw a ray through this. A ray is just a line that goes on. Uh, in one direction, but not in the other direction. And the reason I'm going to do that is because um, it doesn't really make sense in this context to have a negative amount of ounces of frozen yogurt. But um, if you drew a line, it wouldn't be the end of the world. So now that we've graphed our equation successfully, the next step is to interpret the slope. So what interpret means is explain what the slope means in the context of the problem. So there are actually multiple ways we can figure out the slope. Okay, So we can always look at the graph, if we have a graph, and do our rise over run. Okay, So I'm going to just count my spaces. I'm going to go up from 0 to 1, and I'm going to go from 1 to 2. Okay, So as I go up 1 unit, I'm going right 2 units. Okay, So my change in y is 1. My change in x is 2. Okay, So I know my slope is 1 half, so I'm going to write that down here, m equals one half. Okay. Now, you also could have looked at the equation. I'm going to zoom in on this equation. This equation is y equals something times x. If you remember, y equals mx tells us that we have a proportional relationship, and this m value is the constant of proportionality, aka the slope. So I can just look at the slope is 0 0.5 right here, because that is the value that's being multiplied by x in here. Okay. But I know 0 0.5 and 1 half are the same thing, so um, I know that I have the slope, which is 1 half. Now I need to interpret it. Well, interpret, like I said earlier, means what does this mean in the context of the problem? Well, all I have to do is look at what my change in y is, because remember, slope is the same thing as change in y over change in x. And my change in y, well, that's basically all I'm doing is I'm increasing the cost. Okay, So I'm going from 0 to $1. So as I increase the cost by $1, how many 
ounces of frozen yogurt did I add? Well, as I go up from $1, that means I've added two ounces of frozen yogurt, okay? So I like to just write it as a fraction, okay? So $1 over two ounces of yogurt, okay? And then that makes it easier for us to write a sentence. If I add two extra ounces of frozen yogurt, it costs $1, okay? This is the exact same thing as saying for every one ounce of frozen yogurt, I'm adding 50 cents, okay? Notice how I could have gone from this right here up 0 0.5 and then write one unit, okay? So this is the same thing as saying for every one ounce of yogurt that you add, it costs 50 additional cents. So I'm going to write that down. Each ounce of frozen yogurt, FY I'm calling it, that you add costs 50 cents. Okay, so now we've successfully interpreted our slope given our context of the problem, so now we're done. The weight Y of an object on Titan, one of Saturn's moons, is proportional to the weight X of the object on Earth. An object that weighs 105 pounds on Earth would weigh 15 pounds on Titan. Part A, write an equation that represents the situation. All right, well, there's multiple ways we can do this. I'm gonna show you two ways. Uh, first, I see that the weight on Titan is gonna be Y, so Y is on Titan, and the weight on Earth is X, okay? So, that means that I know that X is, X is Earth, and then Y is Titan, okay? Well, I also know that an object that weighs 105 pounds on Earth would weigh 15 pounds on Titan. Remember, Titan is Y and Earth is X. So I'm gonna write that. Titan is Y, Earth is X, okay? Well, proportional means that you can write a proportion, okay? So you could write X over Y equals one of my X values and its corresponding Y value. Well. I have a y value, which is 15. I have an x value, which is 105. I know the same object that weighs 105 pounds on Earth only weighs 15 pounds on Titan. So on Earth, for x, that's going to equal 105 over 15. Okay. Now, since I have a proportion, I can cross-multiply here Okay, to solve my proportion. So this is the same thing as 105y equals... 15x. And I'm going to move this up for a second. So to solve this equation, all I need to do is divide 105 on both sides to solve for y. We typically like to solve for y. And then I just have to simplify this fraction. I'm going to get y equals, well, I know I can divide a 5 out of the top and bottom. So this would be the same as, if I divide a 5 out, this would become a 3. And then this becomes 21. But then I know I could divide this, I can simplify this to 1 over 7. So this becomes 1 seventh x. Okay, so this is my equation that represents the situation. Another thing that we could have done without writing the proportion is I could have understood that the word proportional means a couple of things. The word proportional means that I know that this point's going through the origin. And that's the same thing as I know it's in the form of y equals mx, okay? Well, in my equations, I need a y and I need an x, so all I'd have to find is m. The math's going to end up being the same here, but I'm going to go back over here. I know that I have 15 pounds on Titan, and the same object is 105 pounds on Earth, and that's x, and the Titan is y. So I can just plug 15 in for y and 105 in for x. So I'm going to get 15 equals m times 105. And now I'm going to do the same math. I'm going to divide by 105 on both sides. We know that 15 over 105 simplifies to 1 7th. We just did the math out there. And that is m. So now all I have to do is plug this m back into our original equation. And I'm going to get the same exact equation that I got, y equals 1 7th x. Okay, so we're done with part A. Now we're going to move on to part B. 
how much would a chunk of ice that weighs 3.5 pounds on Titan weigh on Earth? Well, remember, 3.5 pounds on Titan, the amount of pounds on Titan is Y. Okay, we see that right here. Okay, so I can plug this value in for Y and then solve for X using our original equation that we just found. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite my equation. Y equals 1 seventh X. I know that this is my Y value, so I'll plug this in for Y. So that's 3.5 equals 1 seventh X. And remember, to cancel out a variable that's being multiplied by a fraction, to cancel out that fraction, I can just multiply by that fraction's reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 over 7 is just 7, okay? So if I multiply by 7 on both sides, I can do it out. 3.5 times 7. This gives me 35. This gives me 21 plus 3 is 24. And then I move the decimal once. So I know that x equals 24.5 pounds on Earth. And now we're done with this example. The distance y in meters that a four-person ski lift travels in x seconds is represented by the equation y equals 2.5x. The graph shows the distance that a two-person ski lift travels. Which ski lift is faster? Well, to find this ski lift from the equation, the four-person ski lift, I'm just going to look at my equation and remember that I have an equation in the form of y equals m. X. This means I have a proportional relationship. And remember, m is the slope. Well, we can see right away that 2.5 is the number that's being multiplied by x here. So my m value, my slope, equals 2.5, okay? So I know that since y is the amount of meters and x is the amount of seconds, I go 2.5 meters in one second. Or another way to say that is our speed is 2.5 meters per second, okay? Now, I need to find the slope of this two-person ski lift from the graph. Well, I can do that using rise over run, okay? So I'm gonna get, just get from this point to this point, okay? And notice my scale here, I'm going up, each space is two units, where on the time axis, each is one second, okay? So each space is two meters, and this is one second to the right, okay? So I'm gonna go two, four, six, eight, and then that's my rise. So my change in y for this one, change in y is eight, and then my run is one, two, three, four, change in x, four. This simplifies, eight over four is two. So I know the slope of this is two, okay? So in this case, instead of 2.5 meters per second, this one is two meters per second. Two meters per second which means that the first chairlift that we're talking about, the four-person chairlift, is going to be faster than the two-person chairlift, okay? So which one is faster? We know that the four-person lift is faster. So now we're done with part A. So we're going to do part B next. Graph the equation that represents the four-person lift in the same coordinate plane as the two-person lift. Compare and interpret the steepness of each graph. Well, we've already interpreted the steepness of each graph. We know that the steepness of each graph represents the speed of the chairlift, okay? But I am going to graph it on um, this graph right here. So first of all, if I look back at my original equation, I'm going to rewrite this one right here as y equals 2.5x. And because it's in this form, I know it's proportional. So right away, before I even have to make a table, I am going to plot the origin, because I know all proportional relationships have the point zero, zero on them, okay? And I'm going to do, I'll do this in red. So here's the origin, okay? So the next thing in order to graph, normally at this point we would make a table, but there's actually another way we can graph, okay? So you, can, you could totally make a table. You could pick easy x values to plug in and find the corresponding y values, but I could also use my slope. I can use my rise over run to get from one point to another point, okay? Well, I know my slope is 2.5. That means that I would have to go 2.5 over 1 because, in this case, 2.5 is not a fraction. In rise over run, we want a fraction. So I could do 2.5 over 1, 
or I could use an equivalent fraction. This is the same as 5 over 2. Okay, so my change in y over change in x, I'm going to rewrite this as 5 over 2. There we go. That's the same thing as my rise over run. So I could just go up 5, right 2. But if you look over on the graph, we're counting by twos here. So my rise, I, I, nece I don't necessarily need it to be an even number, but it might make my graph easier to, uh, to plot if it is. So instead of 5 over 2, I'm going to go back. I'm going to write another equivalent fraction. And I'm using my red pen now. That's okay. Um, 5 over 2, if I multiply the top and bottom by 2, again, like I just did here, I'm going to get 10 over 4. This is the same number as 2.5 and 5 over 2. Um, but now my rise is 10 and my run is 4. And if this is a little confusing, that's fine. You can still use a table to graph. Okay, So I'm going to go up 10 and then write 4. And that's my second point. Now that I have my two points, I can draw a line through this graph. And in this case, I'm going to do a ray. So now I have graphed the four-person ski lift, and we see that it is increasing a little bit faster than um, the two-person lift, okay? And then, like I said, we've already interpreted our uh, the steepness. The steepness represents the slope, which we know represents the speed of the chairlift. So now we're done with this one as well.